Um, I'm going to step a little backwards here and um, take a global scan at what we know on climate-induced um, migration and point to three key reflections that uh, perhaps we should be focusing more on. There's, been, there's actually quite a lot of work uh, on climate and migration. And um, so it's, it's quite heartening to say that it's, it's uh, prominent on the um, radar of international organizations, the authoritative ones being the UK government-funded foresight report. Uh, it's on migration and clo global climate change. And the Asian Development Bank work on what we know in Asia and the Pacific, uh, both in terms of the absolute number of disasters and the number of people affected, Asia and the Pacific region offers a lot of uh, knowledge and understanding. The ADB work actually uh, has, is based on a number of deep, uh, detailed work on a several, several countries in Asia. The International Organization of Migration's work, both from experience and their research uh, series on migration research series, UNESCO's Migration and Climate Change Report. The number of NGOs as well have been uh, quite active, including the Climate Justice Foundation and uh, CARE and others. What do we know so far? Um, we know migration is a very complex issue. His Excellency here told us what is the distinction, how, how should we look at uh, forced displacement and uh, conscious uh, planned migration. Um, actually, migration has three main drivers, economic, social, and political. And climate affects all the three drivers, and in different ways. It not only affects its three drivers, but it also affects the interlinkages between these three drivers. And then we know migration will continue regardless of climate change. So what is the added dimension, climate change or environment change, as some, some, some um, agencies say? What is the added dimension this will bring to, to migration? It can affect both ways. It can make migration less possible in some situations, or it can make migration more probable in others. And the climate impacts on migration are extremely complex, they're diverse, and the outcomes are equally complex and diverse. This is a very quick snapshot. I'm not going into the details of numbers um, and so on. This is to set the stage for the questions. Now, there is a reasonable degree of consensus here on in responding to the challenges. <coughs> that migration is an adaptation strategy and therefore presents a very interesting and an important policy uh, opportunity. And it also presents an opportunity for policymakers to make transformational changes. This is kind of well recognized and uh, articulated across the board. However, in doing so, um, the two important strategic <coughs> policy response that, uh, that policymakers need to pay attention. One is to reduce the climate impacts on communities at risk. And at the same time, to use a proactive and planned migration policy and strategy, which is an opportunity for transformational adaptation and long-term resilience. What happens when we reduce the climate impact on communities at risk? It actually aims uh, at reducing the, the vulnerability, risks, and uh, security, particularly social security, of people who choose not to migrate or are unable to migrate. It's very important to policy to focus on that aspect as well, as well as being a planned, proactive strategy based on you know, what we know already and using the best tools of early warning systems. And these two decisions are fundamental in, in policy responses, mm. and there's no one or the other choice. <coughs> And at the international level, transnational, there's, there's um, both transnational and internal migration. And it's important to, fa to pay attention to the fact that national and transnational policy options have to be coherent, but they demand mm -hmm. different approaches. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to international level, uh, I, I'm very pleased to see how much we touched upon the earlier speakers on the uh, legal aspects some scholars have uh, argued that um, you know, we know that climate refugees have no legal standing in the migration countries, and that poses huge challenges and risks, and particularly in, in countries where, are, where there are trans-border conflicts <coughs> of ethnic or resource competition. This can be 
extremely uh, challenging. Some scholars argue the um, providing the terminator term instead of saying climate refugees, say climate exiles, to in order to give greater political and legal rights and sometimes even citizenship. That is that is uh, these are these are being articulated now. The experience from Asia and Pacific and the Pacific at the national level suggests that policy response needs to go beyond humanitarian assistance. Much of the focus has been on humanitarian assistance so far. And it's important to include legal protection, social security, and livelihoods as a core of proactive policies. In other words, it's important to set the policy debates of migration around climate migration within a development context first and foremost in order to be lasting and sustainable. And we also recognize that there, there are very limited financial instruments that favor migration and both the, the prospects of uh, making migration more, adapt more of an adaptation choice. Now, in conclusion, I'd like to point to three important reflections where we need to pay more attention. Um, we have not paid sufficient att attention on women-specific issues in migration. In countries, in developing country situation where there are, um, there's a huge uh, cultural aspects, women have very limited mobility. Their tasks of managing the land or the agricultural land where men migrate, they tie, they're tied so in, uh, intrinsically to their land that it becomes more, more difficult. There may be uh, roles of caregiving, having small infants. The choice to migrate becomes almost no or nil. Sometimes cultural factors make it even more of a contradiction to survival response. And it comes, if they do choose to migrate, it comes with huge, huge uh, costs of that. Now the second one, we need to pay attention to the individual behavior and the community responses and the choices of community responses to migrate. And the Bangladesh study, and, uh, and we've done, CDKN has done some work in, in, the, in Colombia as well, in the Manati region. And I'm pleased to say some of CDKN's work actually focuses on the socio-psychological aspects of migration. And, and I'd like to recommend policy making around reinforcing those psychosocial uh, behavior aspects and patterns. Because a lot of tacit knowledge exists in what people understand in terms of the choice of migration and what prompts their migration, like uh, Professor Knifton's uh, choice on, on the coke issue, he said. It's not, just a, it's not just a spur of the moment. It's years and years, as in Bangladesh, it's years and years of adaptive behavior. And there's a huge amount of uh, knowledge and uh, tacit experience that comes with it. And lastly, in rapidly urbanizing developing countries, we need to pay attention to the nexus of migration, particularly climate-induced migration, and large cities. Often, the slow planned migration to rural to urban migration happens because of resource climate you know, small climate changes, gradual changes to climate, soil or resource degradation that forces over a period of time migration to the urban areas. And then here is another climate in, uh, event that make them migrate again. And this poses a huge infrastructure demand, not only during climate migration, but also previously. And it adds to the, the complexity. So these are three aspects that I'd like to focus on. Great, thank Vina, you. thank you very much. That was very, very useful. I uh, very useful to include the, the, the reflections on both the gender, the psych psychosocial dimensions, and the urbanization uh, um, thing. And, and you've nicely anticipated that because I already have a question from the University of Southampton on the urbanization thing. So that was well raised. So we have a chance to hear from the floor now. Um, I hope there's some roving mics. 